Hello, everyone. Kamusta na? Happy New Year. Ba't malulungkot yung mga mukha ninyo? Hindi <laughs> ba Happy New Year ninyo? Um, anyways, um, I just have a opening statement muna, which I'll provide everyone today. And then, uh, of course, we'll be uh, ready to answer a few questions after. So, if I may. Good morning, everyone. The Constitution is the supreme law of the land. It is an enduring symbol of our democracy, enshrining the foundations of our nationhood and reflecting the consensus of our citizenry. While we respect and recognize the people as our sovereign, with the right to call for constitutional change, we must guard against any attempt to revise the Constitution by exploiting our democratic processes under the guise of a people's initiative. The people's initiative on Article 17, Section 1 of the Constitution stoke fears of the unknown among our citizens. Any proposal to amend or revise the Constitution must identify the provisions being changed, containing their full text, but most importantly, must be forthcoming on the impact, effect, and true intention behind the proposed changes. Only then can they be presented for approval to the people, our sovereign, from whom all powers emanate. The proposal subject of the People's Initiative could have led, or could lead, rather, to a constitutional crisis, destabilizing our bicameralism and upsetting the systems of checks and balances. While the Senate is vehemently opposed to a dilution of its participation in the task of reviewing the Constitution, we exercise all restraint because in any conflict, it is always the people who stand to suffer the most. For this reason, I, together with the leadership, Senate President Pro Temp Lauren Legarda, met with President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and the leadership of the House of Representatives on January 11, before Divan de Honor, in order to raise concerns on the proposed amendment contained in the People's Initiative. The President agreed with us that the proposal was too divisive and asked the Senate to instead take the lead in reviewing the economic provisions of the Constitution. In this way, we can preserve our bicameral nature of legislation. While the Constitution must be reviewed in keeping with the demands of, our, of the present and possibilities of the future, we believe that we must first exhaust all avenues open to us through policy making and legislation. That is precisely what the Senate did when we enacted amendments to the Public Services Act and liberalized many industries to attract foreign investment, encourage competition, and improve the delivery of basic services to our countrymen. The Senate stands firm behind the Public Services Act as a landmark piece of legislation that reforms our economic landscape. We, however, and I'd like to repeat, we, however, recognize that the case assailing the Constitution of Republic Act number 11659 or the amendments to the Public Services Act is currently pending before the Supreme Court. As such, the Senate commits that it will work with the House of Representatives to remove all doubts on the constitutionality of the law by ensuring that the liberalized policies contained in the Public Services Act can be implemented and relied on by investors as an enduring policy. It is only in this respect the Senate can agree to modify the Constitution. The framers of the Constitution deliberately ensured that modifying it will be an arduous process, never to be taken lightly. We wish to assure the people 
that in reviewing the economic provisions of the Constitution, we will be circumspect. We are guided by the knowledge that our sovereign is watching and that the work we should do represents no interest other than the people's interest. So that is my statement, ladies and gentlemen, of our friends in the media and the people watching us in uh, live in uh, the TV and uh, radio as well as social media. Yes, my dear. Sir, you said that President Marcos parang commanded you that Senate will take the lead um, yes. in terms of amending the Constitution. But uh, mas gusto nyo policy making, so Public Services Act. But by any chance, does that mean, sir, that you will be, the, the Senate is more open to charter change this time around since my order na kayo from the President? Ganito kasi yan, yung, the complaints of some of the investors, the question, the question first asked is, do we need to amend the Constitution, right? So now, we feel in the Senate that after passing the Public Services Act, hindi na po kailangan amendahan yung ating provision when it comes to economic um, uh, economic uh, amendments. Unfortunately, my pending uh, my pending case sa Supreme Court, marami po nag-file. So, ano nangyayari daw, maraming natatakot pumasok sa banta dahil maski na meron na po tayong batas, wala pong TRO, but what if after one or two years, the uh, Supreme Court declares it unconstitutional? And once the Supreme Court declares it unconstitutional, paano daw nila ma babalik sa 60-40 yung kanilang mga investments? So, may rason. No? May mga mabibigat din na rason. And that's why we are open up with the leadership of the Senate. We had several meetings with the senators after. We are open, open rather, to discussions on the amendment of the Constitution on these particular provisions. But we are going to do it um, separately, voting separately. And that is why we have prepared a resolution now signed by myself, Senator Lauren Legarda, and Senator Sani Angara on the economic provisions, amendments of the economic provisions of the Constitution. So with this, um, we had asked, uh, the, the, the majority members had asked Senator Sani Angara to lead a subcommittee on the uh, Committee on Constitutional Amendments uh, to tackle this particular issue. We chose Senator Sani Angara kasi kailangan talaga natin dito ay abogado. So, uh, with due respect, hindi ko pa nakakausap si Senator Robin Padilla. Um, he's still abroad. But when he comes back, kakausapin po namin siya at uh, magre-request po kami na kung pwede, para dito sa usapin na ito, we will ask uh, a creation of a subcommittee for this purpose. So, uh, just to make a long story short, we had a meeting, um, uh, the chain of events that had happened. So, uh, nag-meeting po, ta uh, nag po tayo, nag nakipag-meeting po ako kay Presidente nung Tuesday. And uh, I raised the alarm about the People's Initiative. He was very gracious enough to meet with me, and we discussed uh, how we can defuse the situation. In fairness to the President, hindi niya po alam yung, na yung People's Initiative language was to uh, diminish the powers of the Senate. And uh, after that, he asked me to meet with the Speaker. We met with the Speaker. We, I met with him uh, uh, on Wednesday, oh, sorry, Tuesday evening, after which we had the lively and vigorous debate on the issue. And uh, we all decided to meet with the President once again at 3 p.m. in Malacanang last Thursday. In that meeting, we, well, we were there early, so uh, uh, we met together with uh, Senator Lauren Legarda, kasama po namin, si Congressman uh, Sandro Marcos, uh, Sap uh, Anton Magdameo, uh, and uh, the speaker and myself. <coughs> In that meeting, we discussed the scenario. And of course, I defended the position of the Senate na talagang malabo yan kasi as far as we're concerned, their plan is unconstitutional because 
we are a bicameral system of government. Kaya, nung pagkita po natin kay, pres kay Presidente, um, we decided, the President, first of all, and I'd like to thank the President for his comment that the PI is too divisive and even mentioned news items from the major networks that he watched the night before. Sabi, oh, magkakagulo na, bakit nagkakaganyan, uh, uh, may bayaran. And he said, he even said na, and I thank the President for this, because he even said na, eh ako dati ako senador. Eh bilang dati senador, hindi din ako papayag na ma-undermine o ma-diminish ang kapangyarihan ng senado sa pagdating ng usaping uh, bicameralism or bicameral form of government. So maganda po ang direksyon ng Pangulo. And ang um, sabi niya sa akin, at kay Speaker, sabi niya, why doesn't the Senate take the lead in the discussions of the economic provision and then you approve your version which the House can adopt? So that was the position of the President. Para hindi na tayo maglalagay pa kung ano-ano pa ang mga uh, uh, amendments na sa tingin natin ay magagalit ang taong bayan. So, um, that was quite clear in the meeting. And that's why in the Van de Honor, medyo smiling na po kami ng uh, Speaker of the House at uh, ang Presidente ng Senado. Because we were able to resolve that very big issue. That night, nag-meeting po kami with the senators. We had about 14 senators that met that night. And we discussed the possibilities. Nakuha ko naman po yung uh, full support ng majority of the majority members of the Senate. Uh, we were also there. Uh, we also had a member of the minority there, Senator Riz Santiveros. And of course, we said to her that uh, we know their position. We will respect their position, but I'm being transparent. As the Senate President, I want to be transparent that these uh, discussions will be taking place once the Senate resumes on January 22. Sorry, isa pa. Sir, kasi ever since naman, di ba, divided yung Senate in terms of cha, -cha and parang kayo mismo nagsabi dati, sir, na pag Pinoy yan, hindi talaga yan mananalo dito sa Senate. But since kayo mismo, sir, yung may reso na, did you get the support of the 14 senators para pumasa po yung uh, economic provisions cha, cha We got the support of the, all the senators that were there, except, of course, for the minority. The minority is non-committal. They have to see the amendments first. They want to participate in discussions and the debates. I'm talking about Senator Visa. She was the one who said na, na hindi wala muna siyang may dadagdag. Although, she was happy that, uh, that the discussions will be moving away from the plan of the PI na ikapon kami. Uh, happy po silang lahat na ang sinabi ng Pangulo na dapat dito na tayo sa ganitong klaseng proseso. Hindi po yung sa gusto ng uh, uh, People's Initiative na yan na EDSA Fuera na gusto nilang ikapon ang Senado at magkakaroon po ng mga posibleng amendments na hindi po natin uh, mapokontrol bilang Senado. Because you have to remember that the, the, uh, the gist of this proposal is pagdating po ng isang constituent assembly which can be called by either one, ha? hindi joint. Either one can call for this. I... Three-fourths vote lamang ang kailangan. So, I did a simple computation. Kung 300 congressmen yun at 24 senators, that's 324. Technically, three-fourths vote is only 243. So, maski na po mag-walk out po tayo, uh, maski na po absent kami, they can amend the Constitution. And we can no longer protect the people's interest in the system of checks and balances that we are, which is enshrined by the Constitution, to a bicameral form of government. So, no, no, we need a, a total of 18 votes when it comes to amending. Is it two thirds and 16? Three fourths is 18. Well, ang binabanggit niya palagi, eh, dyan lang naman sa gusto mag amend, eh, dahil sa economic provisions. According to him, officially in front of me. Any, I don't want to put any words in the speaker's mouth. I would rather that you ask the speaker himself on his position right. on this. Your line is uh, for, the, for the 300 members of the House of Representatives. Your, your 
nandun din naman si Sandro. So, Sandro is a uh, senior deputy majority floor leader. And uh, um, I believe the message was loud and clear. I, I hope that the message was loud and clear. Sir? So, yeah. Excuse me. Uh, isundan ko lang yung kay Marlon. During that meeting, was there a commitment given by Speaker Romualdez na they will not support in any other way yung PI? Because according to Firma, they are working um, on this, on the PI, in coordination with the uh, Congress. I no longer want to fight with my colleagues in Congress. <laughs> One week po ako hindi nakakatulog. Kaya hindi rin ako nakakasagot sa inyo dahil may inaayos po tayong gusot and um, we were able to get consensus from from everyone including the President. I think those questions about the Speaker should be asked to the Speaker. Mm, was there a... How can you how can you guard um, the, the eventual proposal of other members of, for example, Senate uh, with respect to... Kasi sabi nyo nga po, economic provision lang pero siyempre independent-minded uh, naman ng mga senators and some really want some political uh, amendments. Well, ang mangyari dyan, uh, my dear colleagues, when discussions on, for example, the, if you see the resolution that we will file today, nakapirma na kaming tatlo, if you see the resolution that we file today, it's limited to yung um, amendments to public services as well as education, and uh, as well as um, uh, advertising. We got the guide from the President. Uh, we, I hope that the President will not uh, be upset if I share this information. Pero si President mismo ayaw niya ng lupa na ibigay sa foreigners. Siya mismo nagsabi, malabo yun. He said that, uh, and I quote the President, this will give us problems in our housing program. It will increase tax rates and it will increase prices of uh, land in the Philippines. And even cited some countries kung saan na may foreign ownership na yung mga mismong locals ay hindi na po nakaka-afford ng lupa dun at lumalabas na. Kaya na nga nagkakaroon ng Asian aid dahil may mga areas like Vancouver, Toronto, and Canada were in a lot of uh, Chinese, Hong Kong nationals pumunta dun binili lahat ng property, yung mga Canadians na original na, na lumalabas na, hindi na nila ma-afford yung, yung uh, uh, lupa at uh, apartments doon sa mga lugar na yun. So we like to thank the President for, God, for that because we are one in the Senate also not to agree on uh, foreign land ownership. Uh, so maganda, meron po siyang direction na sinabi, uh, keep away land uh, from uh, ownership. Sir, and sir. even media, sabi niya. Ayaw din niya ng media kasi uh, kung may foreign ownership of media, baka mag-influence peddling pa yan dito on certain agenda. So ayaw din niya po yun. Uh -huh. So we're limiting it as far as the Senate is concerned, that Thursday night discussion, we're, limi we're limiting it to the scope of the Public Services Act. Education, because we feel, lahat po kami naniniwala, na bakit hindi makapasok ang Harvard dito? Ang Yale, ang Stanford, pwede naman silang mag-set up ng skulaan dito. They do it in Singapore, they do it in other countries. So we should allow them para ang tumas naman ang dekalidad ng ating edukasyon. Um, and of course, uh, we're limiting it to these three right now. Sir, two, two more questions lang, yeah, sir. Uh, Pabusin mo na lang si Chen. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Marlon Chen. Right. Sir, so pumayag doon si Speaker na... Uh, in the first place, aware si Speaker na merong ganitong resolution and he agreed na in the end, at the end of the day, they will just vote uh, according to to your version. Ganun po. That was the agreement that we had made in Malacanang on the 11th of January at 4 p.m. Okay. Sir, last question. So, so, yan yung agreement po namin and I hope uh, uh, um, all parties will, will agree and uh, and we thank the President for that because at, at totoo dyan talaga magkakaroon ng constitutional crisis. Hindi po talaga papayag. Alam mo, lahat ng mga kasamahan ko, atat na atat na umatake. At sabi ko sa kanila, pag lumaban tayo, there's a point of no return. Kasi kung magkakainitan ng dugo ang House and uh, Senate, 
paano, na, paano natin may papasa yung mga batas natin? Eh kung ayaw mo, ayaw mo makipag-usap sa congressmen, how do we do the BICAM, bicameral conferences? How do we do our LEDAC? Pagkakagulo, masyado mainit. So, ang talo dyan ang taong bayan. So, I had to keep a cooler head and um, even if it was very difficult for me not to say anything about this issue, we wanted to find a win-win solution that would limit uh, the impact uh, in terms of uh, 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 constitu a constitutional crisis with both houses of Congress. Sir, one last question from my end. Is this going to be a priority? Is it going to be priority? It will be a priority uh, by uh, the Senate as far as we're concerned. Only, only uh, on economic provisions, napakaklaro yan, we will have public hearings. And in these public hearings, we will have debates. And as you said, kung meron man mag-propose mag, mag, uh, mag, uh, uh, ng controversial, dito sa Senado, term limits or removal of term limits or uh, change of government, I'm sure the members of the committee, the subcommittee, or kung gusto ng ating mga babae, gawin natin na committee on the whole uh, to be uh, presided by uh, myself and Senator Angara, we can put it on a vote. And obviously, ano yan, 18 votes at each time. Sa committee level, para paglabas na committee report, that was voted upon by two, three fourths of the members, your final committee report, and then we'll put it in plenary and make a vote on a, again uh, for 18 votes or for three fourths vote. Well, I cannot, I, I cannot predict what my colleagues would be saying, but I think the simpler the amendment, the easier to get 18 votes from my colleagues. Wala naman. Wala naman. Kasama ni Pangulo, wala naman. And by this final uh, resolution, is it just an, an, an admission na may defect, may constitutional defect, yung amendment sa BNP? Because I was, my eyes were opened because we had a meeting with uh, Frederick Goh, yung kanyang uh, officer, or well, the presidential assistant for his economic team. Um, and I sp we spoke also to several other businessmen. Natatakot sila. Kasi, kaya nga maraming pledges, hindi pa natutuloy po yung pledges, is because whenever they speak to their legal team here, yung mga Filipino lawyers, meron pang pending sa Supreme Court. So, uh, sayang naman. No, Napakasayang. Kung 1.1 trillion nga ang pledges ng, ng uh, mga dayuhan na mag-set up ng mga businesses dito, uh, bakit naman natin sila at sa puwera? Ay pupunta lamang yan sa Vietnam, pupunta lamang yan sa uh, uh, Thailand, sa iba ibang bansa, kawawa naman ng Pilipinas. So, uh, we are, uh, we listen to the pulse of the public and also the business sector para sa ganun ay uh, makapasok talaga at makaroon, magkaroon ng legacy and last, uh, legacy uh, projects and investments in the country. Sir? It is not, yeah, I'd like to say that um, uh, iba kasi yung panahon nun, iba yung panahon na yun. I think in the, when we passed the 1987 Constitution, uh, it was not defective because at that time, all countries at that time were looking inward, di ba? Nationalistic ang tendency nun nung 1980s. Ngayon po, globalized na yung economy natin. And uh, uh, by doing this, definitely erases all doubts na gusto po natin ng foreign investments na pumasok sa ating bansa. Suicide yun para sa amin. No one, um, wala, vehement, vi, uh, vehement ang uh, uh, objection ng mga kasama ko on, on this, on this, uh, this uh, topic. So, uh, we limit it to economic, as what we promised the President, we limit it to economic provisions and we'll be discussing on the economic provisions uh, on this particular uh, Senate resolution. And that hopefully will be put to rest the PI, the, the people's Well, sana po. Um, um, sana po yan ang mangyari. Yan ang kagustuhan din ng Pangulo. So, um, of course, uh, the question now will be with our colleagues in the House of Representatives. Sir, um, Sabi, ang, ang initially po, sir, di ba, re-reviewin po ng subcommittee ang economic provisions ng Constitution. And then, 
eventually magko-convert po Congress to Constituent Assembly kasi dinidiscuss niyo na po yung 18 votes which Hindi is two-thirds na, two -thirds uh, na Dito na lang kami boboto. Yan ang usapin namin sa Malacanang. Uh -huh. We will be here, we will pass this, 18 votes dito, and we will submit it to the House. Yung and then if, po, if, uh -huh. if they, well, ang gusto ng ating Pangulo, i-adapt na lang po ng House of Representatives. Na kung hindi po i-adapt ng House of Representatives, magkaka-impasse po tayo. So same route, sir, ng uh, pinagdaanan po ng Public Services Act. It, uh, may it, is, uh, like, uh, it will be like a bill, uh -huh. but uh, uh, three-fourths vote. We will deliver three-fourths vote to the Senate. Yes, sir. And then, sir, dun sa meeting po, uh, nag-agree, sir, si Speaker na... Uh, uh, Nag-agree po dito si Speaker Romualdez, sir, kasi sir, ang sabi ni Senator Amy Marcos kahapon, it seems na siya yung nasa likod ng People's Initiative kasi yung mga directives uh, coming, nanggagaling sa mga staff niya. So, sir, dun po ba una, sir, may admission po ba na siya yung nasa likod ng People's Initiative and after that meeting, clear po ba na wala na matitigil na itong mga pag-ikot-ikot po para sa firma? You know what will happen if I answer that, di ba? Magkakagera kami ng house. So, <laughs> I suggest that you ask your Sino yung counterpart mo sa house? Ngayon pa? Si Isa, sir. Si Isa, sir. Tanong mo, si Isa, na na mag... It's just the name. Actually, parang uh, it's just, as far as I'm concerned, it's just the name, which is Constituent Assembly. Uh, even Senator Frank Villon, the former Senate President, the former Minority Leader, had given this proposal that it can be done that way. We don't have to meet in one place to come up with a Constituent Assembly. Uh, as far as they're concerned, uh, and this was also discussed during, uh, and this was also discussed in one of the committee hearings by, I think, Father Bernas and uh, some other constitutionalists, that it can be done that way. So we can meet here, pass the resolution, three-fourths vote. They can meet there, pass the resolution as well, three-fourths vote. Um, uh, pero kung magkaiba, yan ang problema, hindi magkakaimpas, hindi po mapapasa yung constitutional reform. But if they adopt the Senate version, then wala tayong problema. Three-fourths vote of both houses. So we, we, feel, we, we maintain that's the best way, that's the best mode, that is the path of least resistance in terms of debates and, uh, and uh, 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 I'd say, heated, uh, heated debates and uh, possible uh, difficult scenarios that may happen if we meet together. So uh, pumapayag din si speaker niyan. Walang problema. As far as the people that I've spoken to, uh, I believe makakuha tayo ng three-fourths vote. Yung mga kausap natin, yung 14, ay yung 13, plus yung mga kasama namin nung the day before, mga tumawag sa akin, parang makakuha po tayo ng three-fourths vote. Limited po on the economic provisions, particularly this few that I had mentioned already. Sorry, SP, tama ba? You, you were made aware of this People's Initiative just this year. No, it broke the last Friday. Yeah, pero but di ba may timeline na binigay si Senator Aimee Marcos? Uh, Alam mo, but, to answer your question, na bulaga ako. Okay. Last Friday ko lang nalaman. Not this Friday, the Friday, what day was it? Friday? Six. Six? Five or six? Okay. January 5 ko lang nalaman. I was in Cagayan de Oro uh, uh, doing some work there. And um, nakuha ko yung uh, uh, litrato pinadala sa all members page ni Senator Chisis Scudero. Yung litrato ng, ng People's Initiative question. Okay. Doon ako, ako nabulaga. Pero sir, why did the BICAM approve nearly 12 billion uh, increase sa COMELEC budget under ple 
plebiscite planned this year when in fact, wala naman tayong gaanong scheduled plebiscite for this year. Well, we were told that that budget was for purchasing of uh, machines. Kasi wala na yung Smartmatic, di ba? Disqualified sila. So, uh, akala po natin eh, para sa election ng 2025 yun. Kasi kailangan mo ng at least one year before bago mo bilhin yung machines. Di ba? Kasi election na eh. Pagdating ng 2025, you only have four months to go before election. So we thought it was the preparations for the 2025 election. But remember that it didn't just come from us. Ah. Hindi galing sa, wala sa NEP yan, wala sa GAA. Hindi kami nagpo-post yan. So that's supposed to be for elections of 2025. And I believe si uh, Chairman George Garcia naglabas na ng payag today, or kahapon, na, or today, rather this morning, nagagamitin daw nila yan for the 2025 elections. Yes, ma'am. order from the president to stop the PI kasi uh, apparently ang discussion among con uh, congr congressional leaders lang how about yung mga private groups na gusto pa rin mag-initiate ng ganong um, uh, PI uh, the president maintained this position that this is divisive the president maintained that position I hope that the people who are listening that's, uh, would uh, be able to get that uh, uh, the body language of the president um, on on stopping the stopping the move, well, I don't want to. I, let's ask the speaker and uh, his lieutenants in the House of Representatives, all those who have spoken out, because according to the speaker in that meeting, mute na academic na daw yung PI kung pag-usapan daw natin dito sa Senado yung itong uh, economic provisions. Kung totoo lang economic provisions lang gusto nila, so. Uh, only economic provision. So, sabi ni Speaker, mute and academic daw yun, but I'd rather that you ask him what is his opinion after we file this today and uh, after the reading of my statement. Uh, even, even sa society niya, no, Speaker, walang categorical or commitment na, okay, we'll stop for now. Well, sabi nga niya, it's mute and academic once this is filed and discussed. So, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't want to add the uh, information that I have no control of. So, best na sa grupo na lang ninyo sila tanungin. Pero, I just want to put on record, they can always call up the speaker, they can always call up Sandro, Congressman uh, Sandro Marcos, who was there in the meeting, they can always call up uh, SAP uh, Secretary Anton Nagdameo, who was also there in the meeting. Sir, paano magkakaroon ng ganung commitment about the PIC speaker when the content of the PI is actually to dilute the voting powers of the Senate. So, ano, uh, paano po yung, paano yung relationship ng dalawa, I mean, ng dalawang moves, if that's the case? Ano yung muna lang si Speaker, Chair? I don't want to, I don't want to guess the relationship. I don't want to guess uh, where the orders are coming from. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'd like to avoid a constitutional crisis between the House and the Senate because it will paralyze our legislation. It will just paralyze all legislation pending. Sayang naman. Ang, uh, sayang naman ang mga mahalagang uh, panukala para sa ating, ating tao bayan. Sure. Because obviously we will, we will fight. We will fight. The Senate will fight tooth and nail not to allow that. It will be a very divisive campaign. Obviously, uh, uh, including all the way to the Supreme Court, we were ready to, were ready to file a, a, a petition uh, all the way to the campaigning of this uh, referendum, all the way to the, of course, it starts with the COMELEC, we will file opposition to the COMELEC, of course, we will file a petition to the Supreme Court um, and fight it tooth and nail. But uh, if there's a compromise such as this, and they decide to just uh, back out because according to the speaker, it's smooth and academic, then we welcome that as well. That will be a more peaceful, um, more productive, more proactive way of dealing with economic provisions without having to, na hindi makakapo ng Senado, at uh, dahil sa pagkapo ng Senado, kung ano-ano pang pwedeng ilabas sa ganong klaseng initiative. So, uh, I think this is the win-win solution that we're all looking for.
uh, sarap ng Pangulo sa akin niya. Okay. I don't know what you say. Uh, best is you ask him, but best is you ask him. I don't want to put words in his mouth. Uh, I'd rather that you ask him. I don't want to put words in his mouth and he'll, he'll deny saying that. Siguro tanuin nyo na lang siya. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Pero, um, we were happy, yung kalalabasan ng meeting na yan, happy po inside ng Senado. So, tam- tama po ba? You will meet again with uh, Speaker after this? Or well, he's waiting day? for my statement. So, I've given my statement today. Hinihintay niya lang yung statement ko bago siya mag-statement. So, I'll wait for his statement as well. The, the second meeting was initiated by the President. Sabi niya, magkita tayo Thursday. You first meeting ako, kasi I wanted to seek guidance. Ano ba ito? Ano ba tong TI na to? Ano ba tong kinukwanda Yung first meeting? Yung tayo-tayo lang? Yung hindi tayo live? <laughs> no, he was concerned. He was concerned. On the second, on the first meeting, we had concerns si Pangulo. Kung saan patungo ito, concerned siya. But I can't give the details kasi it was privileged information. Nandun kami sa bahay niya. So, sabi niya para maayos na natin itong gusot na ito. In fairness to the President, he was trying, he's trying to find ways na hindi madagdagan ang gusot ng pagtakbo ng ating pamalan uh, para sa ating taong bayan. So, he was just trying to find ways na hindi magkakagulo. Imagine if everyday, yeah, toxic masyado yung yung mga salita namin sa, sa news, mga tao, of course, it will look like a divided uh, nation. If every day in the news, eh, nagsisigaw, nagmumuran po tayo dyan. So, uh, even investors would be afraid to come in. Sir, sir? Ah, wait, si ano muna? Oh. <laughs> Nauna po si Marlon. Okay. I was never adamant up. Well, let's put this for the re- on the record. I've said it many times. There, are, there, there is a need to amend certain provisions of the Constitution. But I've said that possibly now is not the time because of the, um, uh, the important matters at hand. But after meeting the economic teams and the business groups that were saying, they're saying that their biggest concern uh, is Dahil sa kaso sa, sa Supreme Court na hindi pa natatapos with finality, natatakot pa rin sila pumasok dito. Sige ako kayo na halimbawa. You're a company who wants to deal with telecommunications. Under the PSA, pwede na po yan 100% owned. Pumasok sila dito, bilhin nila ang PLDT, for example. Yung mga uh, uh, magagaling na kumpanya, let's say yung, ano yung sa Japan, yung magandang company dyan, yung Docomo ba yun, ganun, pasok sila dito. And they give us 100% uh, 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 100% service. Happy lahat ng tao. They spend ha- a bi- billions of dollars. That was a big Supreme Court unconstitutional. You have to just have only 40%. You have to sell 60%. Eh, sino ba naman hindi ma- masisiraan ng ulo dyan? So, any businessman would not want to put up major infrastructure here and investments if that is the the uh, uh, that is the pending case or there is a pending case in the supreme court yes. uh, i think what the president uh, position against uh, foreign land uh, 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 more acceptable to you think that uh, oh uh, kasi uh, definitely kung nilagay natin yung land ownership diyan pati kayo dito sa senado wala tayong makukuha siguro iilan lang sa papabor baka dalawa lang or baka wala wala pa ako nakakausap dito na pabor sila sa land ownership ng dayuhan. Kasi, alam mo naman sinong bibili lang nandyan eh. Kung hindi, yung ating mga kapitbahay na nang gustong manggulo dito. Di. Tapos yan ang mangyayari dyan. Tapos, yung ating mga kababayan, nangyayari na nga yan na yun eh. Diba? Dahil sa mga pogo and all that na hindi na po uh, ma-afford na ating mga kababayan, mga condominiums dito sa... At tanungin nyo naman, Senate staffers natin dito. Hindi na sila maka-arkila ng, ng apartment dito sa area na to, sa Pasay. Dahil sobrang mahal, pupunta na, talagang abot na sila ng Cavite. Because of course, it's being rented by foreigners. So, I would suggest talaga na we, lim- we, we do not include that in the 
in the amendments to the Constitution. That will be very difficult for everyone. Sir, sir, may pinag-usapan na po ba kayong timeline para dito, sir, sa review na economic provisions? Like, may target date na ho ba? Kasi may sinasabi rin na possibly, uh, well, uh, um, uh, dapat sa zona ni Presidente, may report na niya ito. Well, napakasimple lang naman ang amendments na to. I don't see any problem finishing it this quarter. Before the, before the Holy Week break. I don't see any problem. Kasi tatatlo lang naman yung Tapos napaka simple. It's otherwise pro it's not specific. It's otherwise it's specific, but we only put the amendment un un unless otherwise provided for by law. So gagawa pa kami ng batas. You understand? Ito eh, kasi ito. Babanggit ito. Yung sa Public Services Act, para maging constitutional na po yung, yung National Patrimony and Economy. That is an art under Section 11 of Article 12. Section 11, lalagyan lang namin ng, ng uh, linya unless otherwise provided for by law. Meron na tayong Public Services Act. That's the law. So that will now constitutionalize the Public Services Act. Pero sir, can you do that without converting Congress into a uh, constituent assembly, sir? Sir, kasi amendment din po yan sa Constitution yung adding that phrase po na uh, unless otherwise provided by After law. After discussing sir? with several legal luminaries, it can be done. It's just a name. What's the Constituent Assembly, our hearings and our voting here will just be, it's like a, a, sem, a separate assembly. They have one there, we have one here. Do we really, have, does it say that we really have to meet? So, sir, if it's to be here. It's in the Constitution that we have to meet all together. Hindi naman, naman. Voting, sir. Sa kami magbimit sa Club Pilipino. Pero if it's to be in, sir, gagawa kayo ng batas saying na dadagdagan ng unless otherwise provided by law ang constitution, sir? Yes. Yung, yung ganun provision? Yes. We'll see it because we're filing this right now after our our press uh, conference. Sorry, I'm just Oh, my Lord. But I'll, I'll tell you, Marlon, huh? guys. So what if we meet in one house? They will be discussing economic provisions. We will be discussing economic. Ano magtatabi tabi kami? We will vote separately. Three fourths vote, eighteen votes. They will vote also three fourths vote. Their vote. Then we come together, and that's the agreed resolution. It's the same if they do it there and we do it here. What is the difference? What is the difference with Sigawan, ng debate? Di magdebate sila, dumag debate kami dito. So it is the same. The, that is the the constitution does not say we have to meet all together. Uh, so you don't have to declare yourself as meeting separately, uh, being a consti constituent assembly, sir. Well, it's schematics. We'll wait for the chairman of the com subcommittee, Senator Angara, to decide how we will call it when we have, we adopt this. Well, if we, whenever we adopt this resolution. But it's the same. I don't understand. People are expecting us to meet in one place. Why? Dahil magsisiga, magsusuntukan kami. Hindi naman, pwede naman namin gawin yan dito. Pwede nila gawin yan doon. What's important there is the three-fourths vote. Voting separately. That is what's important because it's a bicameral form of government. Yan ang pinakamalaga dyan. Na boboto kami, three-fourths. Boboto sila, three-fourths. Pag hindi po kami naka three-fourths, wala nang usapin ng charter change. Ganun lang yun. And sir, confident kayo sir na makukuha yung suporta ng 18 senators, sir, or more? Depending on the uh, amendments, dito sa amendments na ito, supportable po ako na makukuha natin ang boto nila. Tama sir, yung timeline sir na sa zona ni Presidente, pwedeng batas na po yung... Well, uh, dada, hindi, na, hindi pa, hindi pa kasi dadaan pa na. Well, depende sa plebiscito, magkaka-plebiscito pa yan. So, we have to ask the COMELEC if they have funds for the plebiscite. Magpa-plebiscite pa yan, my dear. Anything that we discuss here and we vote on will still go to the people. So, we'll have a plebiscite kung sasangayon ba sila dyan. So, sir, ang, sorry, sir. Ha? So, ang step-by-step, sir, is... Uh, Subcommittee, of course, yung approval ninyo, and then uh, yung dadagdagan na unless otherwise provided by law, plebiscite, and then you'll uh, write the laws, sir? Yes. 
Ang mangyayari, hindi na kailangan sa Public Services Act, nandiyan na yung batas eh. Opo, ay, pero sa iyo, sa, edu like, sa education. Yeah, sa education, magpa-file pa tayo ng bill. After, uh, sir, na ma... Sa babalik ulit tayo sa... Going back to the fir first step to filing a bill that will allow, let's say, foreign ownership for education in the country. Dadaan ulit sa uh, ganyang klasik proseso. Ayan. Bawal yun. Bawal yan. Any form of bribery, whether with government funds or private funds, bawal yan. And even the, I believe the COMELEC has said this, na kung mapatunayan nga na nagbigayan ng pera, that's an illegal activity. So, bawal yun. Bawal yun. So, what's I mean, that I think we're all in agreement na bawal po siya. So, naging concerned din ba yun ni Presidente? Huh? So, sa meeting po ninyo, sir, naging concerned din po niya yung report ng bayaran? Yes. The People's Initiative. Yes. Sir. Nagbanggit nga siya ng mga news agencies. Katulad nyo. Katulad mo. <laughs> GMA. Ay, hindi ko na babanggit. Lahat. Pinapanood niya. In fairness to the president, he watches the news. Ha? Yes, he sir. Because we news. report. Sa, kasi oh, ang report ho namin. Oh. Sir, yung na-report ho namin kasi na may nagkakabayaran. Yun yung sinight, sir. Oo. Oh, sinight niyo yun. Sinight niyo, sinight niyo yung nangyayari sa Bicol. Sinight niyo yun. So, uh, He's concerned. He's concerned. Sir, what? Ladies if first or ladies first? <laughs> Sir, even when it happens, na kailangan yun na nado pa yung scenario that you will uh, file a petition before the COMELEC, you're going to use all these so-called bayaran, the payoff. Well, uh, I believe Senator Amy Marcos has filed a resolution on this issue. She's leading the Committee on Electoral Reform. So we can await her uh, committee hearing and let's await her findings. I, I believe I leave the, the, the I, would, I would like to wait for the resolution of that uh, uh, filed uh, uh, measure of the good senator, senator from Locos Sur, or Locos Norte, Senator Amy Marcos, and we'll wait for the outcome of that uh, hearing. Before we can make a decision. Oh, no, no. Well, first of all, alam mo naman, uh, I personally am allied with the president, so I seek guidance on these particular divisive issues with him. Um, he doesn't get involved with the dealings of the House and of the Senate. Never siya talagang nakikialam sa atin dito. But when it comes to these positions, for example, yung MUP, di ba? Uh, nagkakaroon ng agam-agam at uh, galit ang mga uh, members of the armed forces and uh, of course the retired members of the armed forces. We had to seek also the the uh, uh, the proposals and the, um, I'd say, uh, the president's feelings on this particular issue, because she's an executive. If she's not going to be able to do it, she's not So, I mean, it's, it's normal to seek the guidance of the president on certain issues. Sir? Of course. What we're trying to, what we're trying to, uh, what we're trying to avoid is a constitutional crisis. I remember, because I'm a member of the Kongreso noong 2004-2005, mainis ang usapin ng charter change noon, noong panahon ni Speaker Joe de Venecia and Senate President Frank Villon. I clearly remembered that because of that fight, hindi nag-uusap yung dalawa. Hindi talaga nag-uusap yung dalawa. nang insultuhan sila sa TV at dahil dyan, apektado yung legislation. I know because naipit yung aking local legislation. Walang nailabas na local bills ko at halos lahat walang nailabas na local bills. We don't want that to happen, guys, because that's going to be bad for the country and for the people. I'm trying to avoid that in my 23 years already political experience in governance. That's the last thing that you want to happen dahil ang kawawa dyan ang taong bayan. Sir, uh, Comelec Chair Garcia said that they will be needing at least 13 billion pesos po, uh, for the levy seat. 
doon sa ratification ng uh, any provision of the Constitution. Do you think it, it is prudent for the government to spend such amount na in the end, wala hong katiyakan na magkaroon ba ng ratification? And second, uh, sabi po ng Kamalek, parang napaka additional burden na po sa kanya considering they are preparing for the 2025 midterm elections. Thank you, Bob. Well, uh, sa economic provisions lang ito, partner, I just want to limit it to the economic provision. I think 12 or 13 billion for a plebiscite, pero makuha natin yung 1.1 trillion na pledges, parang cost-benefit yan. Mas mataas para sa atin. Di ba? Kung Kung talagang papasok, kung maayos natin yung gusto dyan sa Supreme Court, particularly on the issue on Public Services Act with an amendment of the Constitution, at papasok yung 1.1 trillion pledges na binanggit ng DTI, uh, highest in 56 years yung pledges na ito, ay uh, uh, sa tingin ko, uh, babawi din, makakabawi din tayo in terms of income for the country. And of course, uh, hindi tayo dehado. So, um, that's my position on that particular issue. On the budget. So, pero yun nga, kung wala tayong budget, then we'll have to wait the preceding year for that. Diba? We'll have to wait for the preceding year kung walang budget yung COMELEC. So, what's important is we do our job. I believe that the, um, or pwede yun yung sabay sa national elections. Diba, diba sa elections ng United States, meron silang rider question. Are you... Do you agree on gay marriages? Yes or no? Do you agree in uh, uh, legalization of marijuana? Yes or no? Diba may ma are you uh, open for legal abortion? Yes or no? Yan yung sa US. Eh. So habang binoboto nila yung kanilang congressman, kanilang senator, my rider question dun, yun na yun. So it's a possibility na pwedeng isabay sa national elections din ito. So para walang gastos. Yes, ma'am. Bakit po sure. sa tingin nyo gustong, gusto ng PERMA or some other groups na ma-dilute ma -di ma ang boto ng mga senator? I can only... Your guess is as good as mine. Your guess is as good as mine. Siyempre, uh, alam mo yung nakakatakot dyan is the entering the unknown, di ba? Siyempre kung tao ka, ayaw mo pumasok sa isang kwartong madilim. Kasi hindi nyo nakikita... Anong nangyayari? Anong nasa likod nitong kadiliman na ito? Uh, it's jumping into the abyss. Yung mga, ta mga tao natatakot tumalun sa dagat, sa gitna ng dagat, dahil hindi natin alam kung anong makikita natin doon sa ilalim ng dagat. Diba? So, uh, it is the great unknown that the people are afraid of. That's why we are going to prevent that by coming up with these specific discussions on specific economic amendments. And para alam ng tao, ito lang pinag-uusapan natin. Wala, hindi kayo mabubulaga. At we will be transparent. So, mas maganda yun kaysa ikapon ang Senado, tapos may yung isang grupo ay tatawag po ng isang uh, asemblea, and then, mas kinawala po kaming partisipasyon doon, to be honest, pwede nyo lang repasuhan ang buong konstitusyon, pati yung mode of government natin. Pwede palitan yung gobyerno natin pwedeng palitan lahat. So, that is the unknown, the great unknown na natatakot po ang taong bayan dyan. Ayaw po ng taong bayan yan. Gusto nila malaman ano ba ang mga uh, specific amendments para sa ganun, uh, pwede nilang pag-aralan yung mga amendments yan kung yan ba ay uh, mapapaganda ang ating uh, uh, pam uh, pamahalaan o pam pamalakay pamamalakay ng ating gobyerno. Pamamalakad ng ating gobyerno. Yan. Eh, bisaya ako, kaya nahinapan. Magkukuha po na magbisdak, magbisaya na lang ko din. Eh. Eh, nalisod ko sa tinagalog. Okay. Yes, ma'am. No, no, no. January 5 ko nalaman yung January 5, nalaman ko na may ganung klaseng question sa PI. And then, uh, uh, shortly after Tuesday last week was what day? I met with the President on the 9th, kami ng dalawa. And then I met with the Speaker once again on the evening of the 9th. 
to confirm the meeting with the president, all three of us on the uh, 11th. Kaya hindi mo na ako nagsalita because I wanted to see the total picture, ano bang kalalabasan ito. So I held my guns muna, tahimik muna ako until we found a, a, a solution to this uh, coming problem. Now, if it is resolved, I do not know, uh, the speaker will have to answer that question. Medyo mainit ang usapin namin. Medyo, it was a very colorful and uh, vigorous discussion. Siya na lang po sa atin. No need. We don't need to be. We don't need to. There's no specific instruction on the Constitution. We can meet uh, separately for that. Uh, we'll ask Sunny and Guy to come up with a very uh, acceptable name for it. Mas magaling yan sa pagdating sa terminology. Isa ito ang gara. Hindi ko pa siya nakakausap, pero... Ang problema kasi sa aking kaibigan na si Senator Padilla, he's focused more on the political eh. Diba? He's focused more on the political. Pagkakaganoon, magkakagulo talaga dito. We want, hindi tayo uunsad. With due respect to my dear colleague, Senator Padilla. Kasi kung change of government ka agad, hindi, wala na talagang pag-usapan dito. Magkakagulo na. So, I'm appealing to him, I'll appeal to him that we'll allow a subcommittee on this purpose. If not, we will call for committee of the whole. If if we do not see Senator Padilla, then we can come up with a committee of the whole, and I'll ask Senator uh, Angara to lead. But eventually, we will committee on the whole din kami because we have to vote. We have to vote uh, for that committee on the whole. We will have a parang kasi ilan ng member na committee on constitutional amendments. Eh. So definitely, ang mga yari jan para magrequest yung mga members na. Committee on the whole. But uh, whatever it may be, it's the Senator Angara. We asked Senator Angara to take the lead in this. And he gladly accepted. No, no. Ang members. We had, uh, that we, it was agreed upon Thursday night. Sub yeah, sub subcommittee on constant amendments on this particular economic provision. So, Chairman Parenzi. Senator Padilla, of course, uh, Robin Hood. But we request that uh, after our Thursday meeting, na we decided, my important, pati ako, I cannot, to be honest with you, usaping legal ito. Di naman ako, pati kang uh, uh, lawyer, di naman ako abogado. Kung sa Bisaya, murag abogado lang. Yung parang abogado lang magsalita. Pero uh, ang importante dyan, yung ang magpreside dito ay isang uh, legal luminary that knows the impacts of this type of uh, uh, amendments to the other provisions of the Constitution and, of course, on how government is run. So it's important that we have a legal luminary heading that particular subcommittee. Uh, the, we, we, what we discussed was a subcommittee. Muna. Para mag, uh, mag na yung hearings on this issue. This issue. They will invite all sectors. We'll also invite. Uh, we will also invite. Uh, yung firma. We'll also invite uh, former constitutionalists, uh, former members of the constitutional co co uh, conventions, and the constitutionalists. We'll invite uh, all sectors. We'll invite the business sector. Para ma marinig din niyo yung complaints ng business sector na hindi nga sila makakapasong investment. Ang gang hindi hindi decision na ng Supreme Court itong issue ng PSA. So, uh, yan po ang stumbling block na yun. Plenary, three-fourths vote plenary. Wala pa, I can't, I, can't, I can't give you a target date. I'm saying that maybe we can finish all the debates or all the uh, committee hearings uh, in the next two months. But I, I don't want to preempt what the chairman, Senator Angara, would want to give us a target date. 
baka I think he will uh, uh, probably start this month. This month. We, kasi we cannot wait. Pa. It's a separate branch of government. Hindi naman natin sila maudyok na pag-usapan ninyo ang PSA agad-agad. So, I don't want naman to, say, to be uh, presumptuous to tell any one of the members of the Supreme Court to hurry this issue up. So, we don't know. It can be between one year to three years from now. But at that time, nakabinbin lahat ng investments na ito. If we can uh, move forward with this particular economic provision, um, I think uh, it would be the best for the country. So we'll see. We'll see. We're not allowed to. It's I'm, I, my secretary is here. He's a lawyer. We're not allowed to. How do you say this? Uh, influence the court. We're not right. I have lawyers here. One, two, three. They're nodding at me. We're not allowed to even mention a bilis nyo. Why? We can't even say it. Why? Because I'm so Before this statute is passed, uh, but it, waiting could be could entail costs in a long period of time. And cost, when I say cost, cost or uh, um, loss, the, what you call the loss of possible revenue. Because if we wait three years, three years. Baka pumunta na sa Vietnam yung mga, mga kumpanya na ito. Remember, um, guys, may karibal tayo dito sa Southeast Asia. Number one investment destination now is Vietnam. Even if we're all English speakers, wala na. Hindi na, hindi na hadlang sa kanila na hindi masyadong magaling mag-English ang Vietnamese. Doon na sila pumupunta. So, um, yan, ang, yan ang actual situation on the ground. Okay? Oh, okay. So, si Manong naman, pa si Kesi, hindi pa. Si Manong, ano? Hindi naman napilitan. Well, I, I would not say napilitan. We just saw the practicality of, because of the discussions that we had, this last week, na hindi talaga umuunsad yung mga uh, pledges dahil nga inihintay nila yung Supreme Court action na ng Public Services Act. So, uh, patalino naman siguro mga senador, nung pinag-usapan natin yan, they made a suggestion, they, let's amend this particular provision sa Constitution para maging constitutional na ang, constitutional na ang Public Services Act. But, uh, kasi kung hindi, sayang naman po yung mga pledges na binagit ng ating Pangulo at ng DTI sa ating bansa. No, not at all. That's not, the, that's not how we feel. That's not our position. Political kasi yun eh. Polit may, 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 medyo political kasi gusto ng ating kaibigan ni Senator Robin Hood. Hindi talaga, wala, ta, wala ni, hindi ko alam ilang boto makakuha, makakuha nun sa political. Talagang, at this point in time, there's no need to rush any political amendment. It's not paralyzing the country, uh, the situation now. So, no further comments on that issue. I'd rather that we focus on the what's task on hand. Thank you guys. Sir, isa na lang. Sir, sir, sir isa Salamat. na lang, sir. Sir. Viva Ravalo. Opo. Sir, uh, iba topic na para hindi <laughs> kaya. Sir, yung PNG, yung um, uh, power outage, sir, sa Visayas, yes. um, I'm sure na monitor nyo, nyo din po yung hearing. So, sir, ano yes. yung take ninyo doon? Kasi nagturuan, sabi din na uh, NGCT, hindi, uh, sinunod nila yung mga ko power plant, uh, sumunod din lang daw sila sa protocol. So, sir, what do you make of that? I don't, kasi, unfortunately, dahil sa problema ng ito, na, naghahanap kami ng ano, hindi ako naka-attend ng, uh, because that was the lunch that we had in Polo Club. That was the lunch we had with the senators. Di ba, nag-lunch ako ng Apple, 
So matagal po kami, yung iba umalis pumunta sa hearing. I had to stay behind to come up with consensus with our other colleagues. So unfortunately, hindi po ako nakabinig sa mga explanation nila. But whatever it is, dapat may maparusahan dyan. Diba? May maparusahan dyan. It's either the the Genco or the distributor or both. A Genco or the transmission or both. Because pangalawang beses na nangyari ito eh, sa Panay. Uh, ako may negosyo sa Panay. I have, a, I have a business in Iloilo. Talagang may ice plant ako dun eh. And everybody knows it's my salon. I have an ice plant in Iloilo. Without power, my ice plant because becomes a water delivery service. Kasi syempre, hindi mo mayayelo yung ice mo. Tubig lang yun. Kaya, laki din ang talo ko. Kaya, kung sinong pwede mag kasama na ako dyan because my businesses were affected in Iloilo at the time. Now, uh, dapat may managot. May, tama yung sinabi na, we lost billions. I, we lost uh, 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 a lot of money in this last, in three days of non-operation. Kasi, syempre, natunaw lahat ng ice namin Wala akong mabenta ng ice sa mga malls, sa restaurants. So, uh, definitely, speaking as a businessman and not as a politician, maraming na perwisyo dun sa tatlong araw na yun. This is the second time. That's why I know. Kasi tumatawag sila sa akin. No, first time, tumawag sila sa akin yung staff ko. Kaya, as a politician, as a public servant, dapat may managot dyan para hindi mangyari muli. Dahil ang napakalaki po ang talo ng uh, the whole island of Panay. This is not just Iloilo City, but Iloilo Province, uh, Antique, Aklan, uh, and uh, Gibaras. So, Capis, uh, napelwiso sila dyan. So, nakakatakot isipin na kayang-kayang i-brown out ang isang buong region, or at least one part of the region, uh, because of, what do you say, uh, uh, poor... Uh, poor management or no safeguards in place. So, pangalawang beses na ito eh. Okay, sa, okay pa siguro sa una. Yung unang kapalpakan ay kaya pang sigurong i-warning. Ang pangalawa, ano na yan? Mismanagement na yan. So, I am in favor of the government proposing stiff fines and penalties to uh, both the GENCOs and the uh, transmission corporation. Kasi, logically, kung sabihin ng GENCO, top, and I'll just be quick para you can ask another question. The GENCOs, kung mag-maintenance service yan, maintenance, pag mag-maintenance, shut down. Dapat yung transmission connected sa other grids para sa ganun, kumuha sila ng power sa ibang lugar. Kami sa Mindanao, okay, uh, meron kaming surplus power. We have 1,200 megawatts of sur uh, surplus power in Mindanao. Ibig po sabihin, pwede po natin ma-export yan sa Panay para hindi magka-brown out. Ngayon, kung hindi naman handa yung transmission grid line ng national grid, wala din po tayo mag magagawa. Diba? So, uh, I think they should look at the totality on the uh, system check on why this was not prevented, and also the interconnection of grids. Because it does not make sense why we have a surplus in Mindanao and we cannot deliver it to Panay. Sino may kasalanan nun? Dito sa transmission, kasi transmission lines yun eh, between grids. Hindi na, I leave it to the people on the ground kasi syempre may... My business, I believe, my uh, uh, yung chamber, mga chambers yata magpa-fire ng classes. I believe in the ERC. I, I uh, like the strong leadership of uh, Attorney Mona Dimalanta. <clears throat> Let's wait for the decision of the ERC. Alam ko, paparusahan nila eh. And I think the president also is very upset. Ha? Galit na galit si Presidente dyan sa issue na yan. Yes, it's possible one amendment that he wants to accept. <laughs> of course, it's just no matter. Hindi kasi nabanggit ba sir ni Presidente yung um, pagpapareview sa franchise ng LGCT sir kasi nasa Congress po ito. Hindi na hindi niya binanggit yung review ng franchise ng LGCT. But we if 
if the franchise of a GTP is reviewed and it's brought up to the Senate, because again, that's uh, considered like a local bill, it emanates from the House, uh, and once it comes to the Senate, we will study. We will study the proposal of the House of Representatives on the review of the franchise of NGCP. But at this point in time, kailangan makabawi yung NGCP. Unang una, they have to invest, reinvest into the company and finish already the interconnection between Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. No excuses. Matagal na yan eh. Ilang April na binanggit nila, tatapusin nila eh. I remember 2019, sabi nila April of 2019. Tapos later on, April of 2020. Tapos excuse ay pandemic. Sa isang di sila makagalaw. After that, April of 2022. Oh, April of 2023. Ngayon, April now, ba itong 2024. Ano ba talaga? Tapusin na nila yun. There should be a, grand, there should be a uh, final ulti or an ultimatum uh, on the the date where they interconnect Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao grids. Para sa ganun, yung surplus ng Luzon at yung surplus ng Mindanao, magamit sa Visayas. Pag may system checks, uh, system maintenance ng mga GENCOs. Alright, thank you very much, guys. Masarap yung pagkain ko para sa inyo. Huh? We will have, but we'll announce it on next week.